Well, welcome back everyone to the Mod Showcase. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful Sunday so far. My name is Leaf and it's always so great for you guys to join me here today. So today we actually have a lot of another aquatic mods, like it's not stopping with these guys. So I do apologize if you guys are hoping to have some land animals, but the land animals that we do have are all top notch. These are some of the best ones we've seen so far. Before we actually do get started today, I gotta give my quick little spiel. Mods are not officially endorsed by Frontier. Here. So do keep that in mind when you do try to mod, you do risk at your own game. But if you do follow like all the instructions that me and Nick and everyone else have laid out, you will be swimming in all the mods and that is not intended with all the fish that we have today. But hey, moving on from there, all these will be requiring Axie. All, maybe some don't, but either way, Axie is always a wonderful thing to have installed because it allows you to use a lot more different mods and allows those mods to have a lot more interesting features. So without further ado, we're gonna just get started today with the Maasai Giraffe Remaster. This one is done by Narwhaler, and this is the first time I'm actually looking this close up to it. This is beautiful. If you guys don't know, Narwhaler has a wonderful repu reputation of going back and fixing other people's mods, and the Maasai Giraffe was already a pretty good looking one, but this just goes to show how beautiful his work can be. He went in and hand painted all of these individual rosettes, not rosettes, but whatever you call them, and it looks so freaking beautiful now. Look at that. Like, I'd even argue this looks better than the base game giraffe at this point. So, of course, the Maasai giraffe is probably one of your more common giraffes that you'll see in zoos. Right next to zoo mix and, like, reticulated. These guys are extremely beautiful and known, known more so because of their chocolatey kind of pattern over here. These guys are insane to see. I love even like the little strike of yellow in between the legs. Like that is stellar work right there, Narwhaler. You never cease to amaze me with your stuff. So if you guys are hoping to get some more giraffe species in your zoo, this is a mod for you. Now moving on through here, we do have a lot of fish to check out today. I am getting started with them early on. Um, so getting in right over here, we're going to get started right now with the common carp, otherwise known as the Eurasian carp. These guys have been introduced worldwide, and they're known as an invasive species. But you know what? That's totally fine because they're very common in zoos, either like, you know, as educational fish, teaching people about like, you know, the dangers of carps being introduced into non-native habitats, or just, you know, interspecies enrichment. I know a lot of people keep these guys with alligators, they keep them with hippos, and I think that's just pretty neat. So if you guys aren't aware, the Eurasian carp is found both in Europe and Asia natively, kind of like in that like Ukraine kind of area, and it's just a really awesome fish to have. I apologize, my camera's going all over the place right now. So if you guys are hoping to have that little stock filler fish, these guys are perfect for you. But we have a lot of other awesome ones as well. This one over here in particular is the Brook Trout. I believe that these guys are found in the United States. I could be entirely mistaken. Yep, they're found in the United States, both United States and Canada. And these guys are just beautiful little fish. I know we had the Rainbow Trout last week. Those guys are my personal favorites, but these guys are really awesome as well. So if you live in an area or building a zoo in the native area of the Brook Trout, definitely do give these guys a little bit of a try to fill out those waterways because they move really freaking well. We also have not only that, but we also have the Euro European perch as well. These guys are very beautiful as well, very popular sporting fish. They differ from the yellow perch, which we'll see in just a little bit by the red on their tails and a little bit more greenish color. These guys are extremely beautiful and Buffsu did such an amazing job at these. By the way, all fish more or less are gonna be by Buffsu, except for one that we'll see in just a little bit. There's a bird outside my window that's just flying around. I love that. Um, so let me just go and find the yellow perch. I believe this guy is him. And if I could just double click him, actually no, we don't even need to. So this is the yellow perch again by me and Buff Zoo. These guys are more so found in America, in like your classic American waterways. And oh no, if you guys just like perches, these guys are perfect for you. They're wonderful little stock filler fish. And I always love using that term because when you have like those waterways, these guys are really awesome to fill out those and give them just a little bit more life. And last but not least, we do have one last freshwater fish 
we do have the black arowana. These guys are beautiful little creatures. This skin was actually made by Jen. She did such a beautiful job on it. And of course the rigging was done by Buffsu originally. I think it's actually based off of the Asian arowana. But these guys move so beautifully. They're actually based on the alligator. And you may notice the way I'm actually clicking on them is up in front of them. And that's because the body is over there technically and that's all the tail right there. So if you guys do have these guys, do keep that in mind. But look how they shimmer in the water. That is so beautiful with like all the colors in there. So definitely go check these guys out if you haven't already. But I know a lot of you guys want to get back to the land. And we have a little bit of a fantasy creature over here. This is actually the first IP based mod that has ever been put out. This is the Ulm from the movie Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. This was a special request by a good friend of ours. Um, and yeah, they just look really cool. They're kind of like bugs, if that makes sense. They're like mutated bugs, and I don't know. They're just really cool. If you guys haven't seen the movie, you probably won't want to get this, but I really do suggest you guys get in it nonetheless, because look how beautiful they are. They look like nice lads. They're actually much bigger than this, but I kept them down to a realistic size for zoos and stuff like that because you would probably want to make a realistic exhibit for them. But moving on from there, we have a lot of other things to actually check out. Over here we have the Quagga. Now you guys may remember the old Quagga mod ported by Sib and done by Pure Winter. Um, sorry, I forgot her name right there for a little quick second, but this guy was absolutely remastered by Narwhaler again, believe it or not, and they just look so stellar. I'm so happy that Narwhaler, like, always finds the time to go back and remaster mods because he always does such a wonderful job at that. If you guys aren't aware, the Quagga is an extinct genus, not genus, species of zebra. Um, and they're just really beautiful. They're very identifiable via their, like, you know, brownish coat and the zebra stripes that they do have on them. There is a current project to kind of quote unquote bring them back. While that does kind of make sense, um, it's more so about like the coat patterns and variations within like recessive genes of currently existing zebras or something like that. I don't really know all the details, but if you guys do want to look up the Quagga project, that is something very cool to look into what's happening in Africa right now as we speak. And it's just a really awesome way to bring back extinct species in a way. So these guys are really beautiful at that. An amazing job to Narwhaler on these as well. You did such a stellar job on them, buddy. And moving on through here, we're not done just yet with the land lovers. We have two more to actually look at. So first being the snow goose. So yeah, the snow goose is a type of goose that you'll find in North America. They're also found around like, you know, Europe as well. Very rare occasions, very, very rare occasions. But these guys are so freaking cute. That's a little uh, alternative baby right there. So keep that in mind. The goslings are, I don't really know where the goslings are now that I think about it, right there. There they are. So I do have to give a huge shout out to Bongo Hardwood. This is the blue variant, otherwise known as the blue morph. They're very beautiful. And we can actually check all of them out right now. Uh, I have to give a huge shout out to Bongo Hardwood for allowing me to use the Canada Goose as a base for this guy. So if you guys are hoping to get a lot more waterfowl in your zoo, Bongo has you covered and so do I now. So definitely do check these guys out if you ever get the chance. I know you guys may be saying, why are they making peafowl noises? That is just because we're not able to edit sounds just yet. Now with the additions of Axie, we are slowly creeping our way towards that little breaking point right there. So do keep that in mind if you guys do like want to hold off on these. There will be an update sooner or later. Maybe hopefully knock on wood if Inaki and Hendrix work it out that we actually do get to introduce new sounds to the game. So that'd be a wonderful thing to have. Now moving on through here, just one last landlubber. We do have the Red Heart Beast. These guys are made by Mark. You guys may remember him. He did the Bont Buck and the Bless Buck and these guys blew me out of the water. This is probably one of my favorite things that he's done so far. The Red Heart Beast is a subspecies of Heart Beast often found in, I want to say, kind of like Central Africa and stuff like that or along those plains. We actually, oh wow, they're actually found in South Africa. That's even cooler. Uh, let me actually remove all the plants from here so we could actually get a better look at these guys. I believe this is a male right here. Yes, that is true. 
and you guys can just see how beautiful their coat is. He did such an amazing job getting the light to work so well with these. I'm very impressed by that. And the horn work and everything and all the details went so far and beyond. We all have to give Mark some immense love for that. We could also check out the female as well. Look at her go. A little bit more of a yellowish tint on her coat, but I still think that it's extremely beautiful. They look so insane. You really knocked it out of the park, Mark, as always. Now moving on through here, you guys may be saying, why the hell are the whales moving so fast? Well, before we actually do get into that jazz, I do want to say with the additions of Axie, we're also not only slowly creeping on sound modding, but we're also creeping on speed modding as well. So these guys will be updated once that actually does happen. But listen, for the time being, pause your game and you can see the true beauty of these animals when they're not clipping into each other. There you go. So I guess we might as well start right here. We have the right whale. I didn't narrow it down to a specific species, but ju but Jen Buffzu and I are gonna be working on a little bit of an update to all these aquatic mods relatively soon. You guys can check the images of the Nexus for more information regarding that stuff, but these guys are beautiful. You guys may notice these little patches of white on them. That's actually something called crab, well, no, not crab lice. Wow, that's actually quite awful. Uh, whale lice and that's various crustaceans that kind of form on their skin alongside barnacles and stuff so that is actually how they get their distinctive patching and moving on through here we have the sperm whale we might as well let him play so we can see him in the sunlight a little bit more the sperm whale is a very iconic animal probably one of my favorite whales these guys are known to dive extremely deep only beat out by I believe the cuvier's uh, beaked whale and another kind. I do apologize. I forget which one actually does beat these guys But these guys are very iconic due to their head shape These guys are called the sperm whale because of what's found inside of there It's not what you may think it is, but it's a completely different other material that they keep inside their head I don't really know what it's for. I do apologize But it is a very interesting thing if you guys want to give a little look on Wikipedia or something or even check out the Zoopedia of these guys because you know it's pretty much the same thing um, moving on through here we're just going to check out the rest of the whales we can wait for this guy to actually get above water so this i believe is the fin whale these guys are very closely related to the blue whale they're just a little bit smaller than them so do keep that in mind there is already a blue whale mod out so if you guys do want to get that for some reason definitely go check that out but these guys are very beautiful very well known because of the fin they actually have on the rear of their tail right there so that is just very cool to have right there and last but not least we also have the gray whale we're just gonna wait for him to kind of like make his way out of the land and there we kind of go yeah there we go all right so the gray whale is another kind of whale again the whale lice kind of does make its way onto these guys but yeah, that's pretty much it for the cetaceans and whatnot. Uh, let's bring it down to a little bit something smaller. And I do apologize if you hear my dog barking in the background. But right over here, we do have the Port Jackson Shark. This one was made, ported over by Rick Modding. Very wonderful porter right there. And he looks very nice. So these guys are found around the coast of Australia. And they're probably one of my favorite sharks. I love the shape of these guys. They look like they have a really, really good attitude. I love them. Uh, also, ported over by Rick is a uh, chain cat shark. These guys are named because of their distinct chain-like features on top of their skin right there. Just very cool stuff. And I believe the last one we actually do have is the Pelagic Thresher Shark. This guy is probably like the nicest moving out of all the marine mods today. So these guys are very well known for their giant tail. And they're more so found in pelagic regions of the ocean. That usually just means open ocean for the most part. And look at them go. I love them. Let's actually get up there with them. I want to show off their cute little faces because they're really adorable sharks. Look at him. They look like tiny little puppets. I love them. But that is pretty much it for our entire mod showcase. If you guys do keep in mind, these guys will be fixed with juvenile and female models later on the line, as well as some up res textures too. I know some people may have some qualms with that, but we'll get that all sorted out sooner rather than later. Um, all that being said, what's your favorite from this week? I always love to hear it. 
probably the black arowana for me i'm gonna be completely honest when it comes to fish these guys have such an insane looking texture and i believe my favorite land one has to be the giraffe will actually end it with these guys this week and i do want to thank you guys so much for stopping by it's always great to see you guys here every single sunday and all that being said thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days bye bye now